What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. This week, we're going to be taking a look at the mechanics of one of the most important moves in VGC play, Protect. Protect can do so much for a Pokemon. Shielding it from attacks as a partner takes care of a threat, stalling out dangerous turns of an opponent's speed control, or denying moves like Fake Out. With its ubiquitous presence in VGC, having a comprehensive understanding of how Protect works in various situations can be incredibly important in all levels of play. Let's start with the basics. Protect is a move with plus 4 priority that stops nearly all attacks against the user. There are a bunch of variants of Protect, including Detect, Spiky Shield, Baneful Bunker, and King Shield. Detect is functionally equivalent to Protect, but only has 8 PP compared to Protect's 16 PP. The main reasons to consider Detect over Protect include the option to gain an emergency plus one evasion with a Z-Detect or to bluff that you have the Fighting Z-Crystal, or to bypass the uncommon combination of Imprison and Protect, which would otherwise stop a Pokémon from being able to protect itself. Spiky Shield is honestly just a better version of Protect. If an opponent hits the Spiky Shield user with a contact move, they take one-eighth of their HP as damage, basically a free rough skin effect. Spiky Shield is notably seen on Pokémon like Togedemaru and Smeargle as a result. Baneful Bunker has a similar effect to Spiky Shield, but instead of dealing direct damage, the opponent becomes poisoned. While Smeargle does have access to Baneful Bunker as well as Spiky Shield, Spiky Shield is still traditionally preferred, so the opponent isn't accidentally poisoned if you want to put them to sleep with Spore, and it guarantees that an opposing Toxicroak or Kartana will have their Focus Sash broken if they attack into Smeargle. Finally, King Shield is the most unique variant of Protect, and it is seen on Aegislash as its unique way to transition from Blade to Shield form. If a contact move lands into the user of King Shield, the attacker will see their attack dropped by two stages. However, King Shield importantly does not stop the usage of status moves, so things like Taunt, Spore, or Heal Pulse can all bypass King Shield and hit the user. Other than that, all of what I talk about regarding Protect will apply to each of these variants in exactly the same way. Because of how strong Protect is, using it more than once in a row has a chance to make Protect fail completely. Otherwise, you could just do something like poison an opponent's Pokémon and do nothing but use Protect with your Pokémon for 8 turns in a row or something. Successfully getting 2 Protects in a row is called a Double Protect, and the chances of that happening are 1 in 3. Getting a successful Protect afterwards is one-third of one-third, so getting a triple Protect only has one-ninth odds. Here's a proper formula for double Protects. N here means the number of Protects you're currently on. For example, if you're on your first Protect, you have one-third raised to the one minus one, or zero power to Protect, which evaluates to 100%. If you're on your second Protect, you have one-third raised to the two minus one, or first power, which is again one-third. The odds of successive Protects caps at 1 out of 729, which means if you somehow manage to pull off an absurd 7 Protects in a row, the 8th Protect would still have a 1 out of 729 chance of successfully working. All of the Protects run off the same counter, as well as the move Endure, so you can't do something like alternate using Protect and Detect to stall out an opponent forever or something like that. As far as managing your odds goes, it's important to realize that in order to get a triple protect, you must first get a double protect. Let's suppose you are in a really desperate situation, where your only two options to win the game are either to get a triple protect or land a critical hit. The odds of landing a critical hit, as of Generation 7, are a very low 1 in 24. However, the odds of getting a triple protect are just 1 ninth, so you should always go for the triple protect, right? Well, not exactly. In order to even have the chance of reaching a triple protect, you have to first get a double protect. Thanks to how probability works, since these two chances are independent, we'll have to multiply the chance of getting a double protect with the chance of getting a triple protect to see what the real odds of getting a triple protect are. One third times one ninth equals one out of 27, which is smaller odds than getting a critical hit. As a result, if you're in that situation where either a triple protect or a critical hit wins you the game, Everything else being equal, you should always go for that critical hit. On your screen is a chart of the effective odds of getting success with Protects. When is a Protect a double Protect though? 
Well, in order for a Protect to be counted as a Double Protect, the Pokémon's previous action must have been a successful Protect. Let's look at a couple examples of what I mean. Suppose this turn, I decide to switch out my Incineroar and use Protect with my Xerneas. However, on the other side of the field, my opponent switched out their Lunala and used Protect with their Tepu Koko. As you can see, Xerneas' Protect failed on this turn, and that's because Xerneas was the last thing to move. There's no way it had anything to Protect from! Now, on this next turn, I have the option to Protect Xerneas, and this Protect is guaranteed to work. Similarly, suppose I attempted to get a Double Protect with my Groudon here, but I failed to successfully pull it off. Now, on this following turn, Groudon will have a guaranteed Protect available to it, as its last attempted Protect wasn't successful. Notably, if a Pokémon uses Faint and breaks another Pokémon's Protect, the next turn's Protect will also be a guaranteed Protect. For example, suppose Toxicroak here goes for a Faint into my Groudon, as Groudon uses Protect. Because Protect was broken on this turn by Faint, Groudon will have a guaranteed Protect available to it on the following turn. In addition to Protect, a leftover mechanic from the Generation 5 games with Wide Guard and Quick Guard can also cause Protect to fail. Back in Generation 5, if you attempted to use Wide Guard or Quick Guard multiple turns in a row, it'd be just like trying to get a Dull Protect, so the Wide Guard could have a chance to fail. In addition, attempting to do something like use Wide Guard, then use Protect, would also count as a Dull Protect, so you couldn't just alternate between the two to do stuff like Block Earthquake forever. The first mechanic was changed in Generation 6, so now you can use Wide Guard or Quick Guard as many turns in a row that you want. However, the second mechanic was not changed. What this means is that attempting to use Protect after Wide Guard still counts as trying to get a double Protect. Let's see an example of this. Suppose my Smeargle used Wide Guard to block the opposing Kyogre's Water Spout, but now it wants to use Spiky Shield on the following turn. You can't be confident that this Spiky Shield will be successful because the previous turn's Wide Guard still makes Spiky Shield count as a double Protect. As you can see, Spiky Shield failed to go off. In a similar way, if you used two Wide Guards in a row, then attempted to use Spiky Shield, the Spiky Shield would have counted as a triple Protect. Just to be clear, it's totally fine to go from using Protect to Wide Guard. Wide Guard and Quick Guard will never fail because you used Protect beforehand. However, if you use Wide Guard and then attempt to Protect, that's when Protect can be counted as a Double Protect. Like we've seen, moves like Faint and Shadow Force can be used to break Protect completely for a turn, making a Pokémon vulnerable. However, when Z-moves do their quarter of their normal damage to Protect, they don't completely break Protect for the rest of the turn, so it's not like Faint. In addition, Z-status moves that aren't damaging attacks never break Protect. For example, if I used Z Sand Attack into a Protect, the Z move effect of increasing evasion by 1 happens without a problem. However, the opposing Pokémon does not receive an accuracy drop, because the Sand Attack part of the move was blocked by Protect like normal. Of course, since King Shield doesn't block status moves, Z status moves will work just fine on an Aegislash or Smeargle that uses King Shield. The interaction of Contact Z moves with the effects of Spiky Shield, Baneful Bunker, and King Shield is a bit more interesting. Your typical Z moves like Inferno Overdrive or Black Hole Eclipse are never Contact moves, even if they're based on a move like Flare Blitz or Crunch. However, exclusive Z moves like Incineroar's Malicious Moonsault, Mimikyu's Let's Snuggle Forever, or Solgaleo's Searing Sunray Smash are all Contact moves, so they can trigger the special variants that protect. In all three cases, the damage is dealt first, and then the extra effect is applied. So, for example, if my Dusk Main Necrozma here uses Searing Sunray Smash into an opposing Aegis Slash that uses King Shield, the damage for Searing Sunray Smash would be applied normally, then Dusk Main will receive a minus two drop in attack from having used a contact move into King Shield. Of course, the damage is calculated before the minus two drop. 
When a contact move like Faint, Shadow Force, or Hyperspace Fury is used into one of the special variants that protect, the extra effects of those protecting moves don't apply. So, for example, if the opposing Toxicroak uses Faint into my Togedemaru's Spiky Shield, Toxicroak takes no extra damage. Similarly, if my Hoopa Unbound launches a Hyperspace Fury into the opposing Aegislash's King Shield, King Shield is broken, and Hoopa does not receive an attack drop. Certain moves bypass Protect altogether, regardless of whether or not a move like Faint was used. On the screen, you can see a list I have of some competitively relevant moves that have this property, though you can find a more complete list on Bulbapedia. In addition to these moves, any move that targets all Pokémon on the field, like Haze, or any move that targets the user and its ally, like Heal Bell, will also ignore Protect and execute like normal. Finally, the interaction of Instruct and Protect allows you to do some cool stuff. Instruct can force a Pokémon to use Protect with no trouble, though of course if it's a dull Protect, it will have that chance to fail. Nevertheless, if you're willing to risk that chance, you can combine Instruct with Protect to potentially use both Protect and an attack on the same turn. For example, on the previous turn here, Kyogre used Protect as Oranguru's at Trick Room. If Oranguru uses Instruct on Kyogre, it could potentially get a dull Protect here, allowing Kyogre to attack with Origin Pulse safely while blocking the attacks from the opponent. In a similar way, Instruct can be used to get guaranteed dull Protects. Suppose on the previous turn, my Kyogre just used Protect, so attempting to get a second Protect would only have the regular one-third odds. By using Instruct, however, one of two things could happen. In the first situation, Kyogre successfully gets a dull Protect. There's nothing too unusual about this one. In the second situation, though, Kyogre fails its double Protect. Now, however, Oranguru uses Instruct on Kyogre, and because Kyogre's previous Protect failed, this follow-up Protect is guaranteed to work. Either way, Kyogre is able to successfully use a Protect on this turn. My friend Swaggy McBuckets described a situation to me where he was able to use this mechanic to his advantage in previous VGC formats. In Trick Room, his Kartana had just burned its guaranteed detect against a Choice Specs Tepu Fini, but Swaggy McBuckets needed time to stall out the remaining turns of Trick Room before Kartana could pick up the final Leaf Blade KO. Rather than risk a double protect and attempt to undo Trick Room by using Instruct and Detect, Swaggy McBuckets was able to guarantee Kartana was safe for the remaining turns of Trick Room before picking up the final KO with Leaf Blade. And that's all for today's Mechanics Monday. While I imagine most VGC players have a strong grasp on the fundamentals of Protect, by understanding these more unique interactions, you now have a broader understanding and can analyze situations you're in with a complete knowledge of how Protect works. Until next time, have a good one.